Okay, number two is similar to number one. I just wanted to have more practice on this. We've got the curve is f of t. f prime is equal to f, so that's a an, f is an antiderivative. tell us what f of capital F of 0 is and we want to find f of b. So that makes me look at something like this. 0 to b, the integral of f of t dt is capital F of b minus capital F of 0, which is 0, right? So capital F of b is just this integral here and that integral from a to b is simply the area under the curve, under f of t from 0 to b. So let's do, we want to do um, f of, let's do this, like we did on the one over here, b, f of b. So we want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and remember f of b is just this integral. So we want to go ahead and um, figure out what that is. Sorry I had to pause it, so I don't know <laughs> what I said when I last left. But anyway, f of b is simply this area, which is the area under the curve. So when b is 1, f of 1 is that area, which is 1. f of 2, 1 and a half. Right? f of 3 that's a negative one-half which cancels with that positive one-half. f of 4, negative one-and-a-half, and negative one-and-a-half is zero. So I've got zero up to four, so f of five is just zero minus one, and six minus one-and-a-half. Okay, all right, there we go on that one. Let's go ahead and get, grab some more problems for here. Problem three it says graph capital F. So we're graphing the antiderivative. Uh, so we know this. The integral from 0 to x of f of x dx is capital f of x minus f of 0, which is 0. So it's just f of capital f of x. So we're basically graphing the antiderivative of this. So what is that going to look like? Um, well, let's do this. This is number three. Oops, sorry, paused again, sorry. So um, capital F is the area under the curve from 0 to F. So from 0 to 0, that's z no area. So it's going to start at the origin. And then, just look what's happening to the area as x moves to the right, because this is my x. And then f of x is that area, right? So what's happening to the area as it goes, as x gets bigger? Well, the area gets bigger faster here. The rate at which it's increasing is faster than it is out here, right? Because the slope is steeper. So looks like it's going to do something where my the area, which are my y values, this is the area, it's going to get fast, get bigger faster, and then it's going to kind of even out. So it's going to do something along those lines. Okay, And then on number 4, if I look at the area, pick an x, area starts at 0 again, but it doesn't seem to get, I mean it grows, but it doesn't grow super fast and then it looks like it starts to grow faster and faster as I move out here because the graph is getting steeper. So it's going to kind of go up like that. So I would call this um, capital F and F, something along those lines. And number five, um, use this figure to estimate the integral from 0 to 7. Um, okay, so to estimate it, the scale is the big thing you have to look out for. So each box is two units. So one, two, three, four, uh, five and a half, 
6, roughly negative 6 down here, since we're just approximating it. And then I'm going to say, oh, see, I did what I just said. Negative 6 boxes, which is negative 12 square units. There's one box, and those two together make two boxes, so that would be like 4. So I'm going to estimate this to be negative 8. Does that make sense? And then if capital F is an antiderivative, and f of 0 is... 25, estimate f of 7. So, 0 from 0 to 7, I know of f of x is capital F of 7 minus f of 0. All right, fundamental theorem of calculus. So, f of 7 is what we're trying to estimate. They told me f of 0 is 25, and I'm, I estimate this to be negative 8, so then f of 7 is approximately, if I add the 25, it would be what, 17? Alright, there you go.